Steven opens the door in this shot, but then in just about every close-up shot, the door is closed, and then in every far away shot, it's open again. Is it just me, or is Amethyst drawn really strangely for this entire scene? Like maybe her eyes are too close, or her lips are too big, or something like that? Guys under your supervision! Why would you include the name of the acronym in your fucking acronym? Also, technically every toy that's ever existed is under your supervision if you own it, so why is that a special feature of these things? Also, also, this song fucking rules. Shame there isn't any kind of official release for it. Invisible guy! Ah, yes! Invisible guy! AKA scam you out of your money guy. Every single face in this shot is fucked in some way, shape, or form. In fact, not only is this entire episode just weirdly drawn in general, but this is the start of the trend of some Steven Universe episodes just having this odd style. There's no way I'm going into that dump. You literally went in there two episodes ago. How does this much water come out of the hose? It doesn't even look like that powerful of a hose. You look sad and wet. Stop it. I lost something, something precious. Your innocence? Stop it. Thank you! The fact that Steven doesn't have any kind of exaggerated expression when he screams here to justify the wind effect just makes this look and sound weird. Why does this selection screen use two squares instead of one? Not to mention at the end of the selection, one of the squares just disappears, so it serves literally no purpose. Dave guy! No! Dave guy! Stop it! Why is it that throughout this montage, the guys now keep rolling out of the slot entirely? We can see in this shot that the slot is big enough for them to not fly out, so what changes? Oh, Onion, what are you doing? What does it look like he's doing? Considering the fact that there's likely no more quarters in that bag since he's using it to carry the guys, isn't it mighty convenient that the number of quarters Steven got from Greg was just enough to buy all the guys that were in the machine? I guess he needs a suitcase? Is he haggling with that guy? He's a tough customer. Looks like they worked something out. Did he get that guy's lunch? Okay, if there's something I could say about the Onion episodes, it's that the play-by-play -play happens constantly and gets really fucking annoying after a while. Is it really so hard to just let the animation speak for itself and to not explain everything that just happened like we're three-year-olds? For fuck's sake, this is Steven Universe, not Peppa Pig. To save you guys the annoyance, I'm just going to add five sins for all of these moments and move on. Oh man, hey good looking. For the love of God, stop it. Steven's eyes here make him look like he suddenly gets really tired in the middle of this conversation. Ranger guy! Couldn't they have at least tried to make it look like Steven was actually yelling here? <laughs> what the hell did Onion crash into to make a fire that big? I really like this scene, and how they characterize Onion in general. Onion is one of the few examples where I feel like the Crooniverse did the whole not playing all your cards thing correctly. Because Onion isn't so important to Steven Universe as a whole that having him be this mysterious messes with things, but his actions are also so all over the place that it still leaves people asking questions even when the show's over. And this moment perfectly exemplifies that, because at this point in the show we don't know if Onion's just some weird kid, or if there's way more to him considering the kind of stuff he does. It's a little much, especially this shot at the end, but I feel like this is how you write an interesting character. Kudos to the Crooniverse, though it's a shame they kind of fuck it up later. Onion! Oh no, you gave the little kid that's willing to steal someone's lunch and throw it into the ocean a wand with the power to duplicate shit with no limit. Who could have ever guessed something like this could happen? That child should not be in possession of such an item. Thank you for your valuable wisdom, Captain Obvious Squared. I traded that replicator for Ranger Guy! Why didn't you just replicate Ranger Guy? Pearl would be good at everything wrong with. How do you move in this stuff? You are a superpower gem that is literally made of light. I don't think a pile of guys should be able to stop you in any reasonable capacity. Try and act like a rich duck. That was about as subtle as a kick to the nuts. Garnet's middle finger isn't the right color in this shot. In this shot, not only is the star missing on Garnet's gauntlet, and not only is one of Garnet's gems on the gauntlet when it's supposed to be on our normal hand's palm, but this is Ruby's gem when it's actually supposed to be Sapphire's. Ah yes, the crystal gems, bested once again by the mighty car. Rich Doc! 
Ducking does not help when the car is falling down on you. Greg should be squashed into a pile of goo and Amethyst... No, actually, I think Amethyst should be able to take this. He even has a miscolored hat. <gasps> this is my ranger guy! You looked at that fucking guy how many times and saw his miscolored hat? How did you see that your ranger guy was gone, know that he has a miscolored hat, then see Onion had a ranger guy with that same miscolored hat and not immediately put two and two together? Even better, how did you not point out that Onion's ranger guy had a miscolored hat earlier? Our trade didn't count! Why does Onion give up so easily here? He's literally shown he can and will shoot cars at people that try and take the shit he has away. In between these two shots, ranger guy disappears. Considering that the wand probably duplicated every atom of the thing that it duplicates, why does destroying it get rid of the copies? Is every duplicated object designed to be tethered to the wand? Because if so, that's kind of a dangerous choice. What if an important duplicate of something gets destroyed because of this? Maybe I'm overthinking things, but that just strikes me as a stupid move. It was more about the memories than the toy. Now we have new memories. Horrible, horrible memories. Aww. 